So I can start? Yep, let's get started. Okay. Okay. We are going to talk about the CockroachDB, the resilient GeoDistribute SQL database. Okay. The Cockroach is a relational Postgres SQL compatible, scalable, cloud native, shared nothing, strongly consistent database system founded in 2014 and derived ideas from Spanner and F1. Its preliminary goals are to provide high performance transactions, geo distribute partitioning, and fault tolerance along the way. Basically, the scenario they are target, targeting lo looks like the following. It's a distributed clusters interconnected around the globe. And now let's take a look at how it's built. The cockroach is built as a stacked layers on top of each other. And it starts with a layer one, the local storage system. Nowadays, we have a choice between the B trees and LSM trees. And the LSM trees nowadays are used mostly everywhere. And the cockroach is not an exception to that. And they are using RoxDB currently for their local data storage. And they are working hard currently on porting it to the Go with some uh, minor or major differences, which you can find out reading uh, if you follow this link, Pebble versus RoxDB. And modern LSM trees are highly optimized for the flash drives and uh, it's mostly used as a key value store with the range scans over it. On top of the local data storage, it can be, the fault tolerance can be built. And how the fault tolerance can be provided with a redundancy. And the redundancy means data replication. But Cockroach also wants to guarantee strongly constant transactions on top of its key value storage. So eventual consistency is not an option and the replicas must be synchronized. So how it solves this part. It's split data into buckets and replicates those buckets. And those buckets form the replica set group, which is uh, kept synchronized with the consensus algorithm and specifically Cockroach imply, uh, uses Raft to solve the consensus for the replica set. And that means that the group has a long lived leader, which processes the writes and reads uh, in the group. And uh, Cockroach stores the low level edit commands in the raft log. Um, as I said, the writes are go through the leader in the group and the reads usually in, in the naive implementation, they are also can be uh, go through the raft log to be served, I would say. But the cockroach uh, uses the uh, optimization, which is called the group leader releases to save the round trips for the reads. And with that optimization, it can uh, serve reads directly from the leader of the group, which call, holds current lease. And the main invariant which the Cockroach system provides is that the leases are disjoint under any conditions. Uh, reads also can be served from the followers. If it's explicitly stated with as of system time statement. And to make sure that those uh, reads that are performed at the followers are consistent. Um, Cockroach uses the decimation of the uh, timestamps that depicts the save points in time behind which we can do the save reads 
and also they verifies. I don't know if you can see the pictures behind my video. Uh, they all, the replicas also check the raft log prefix has has consumed enough to serve the read from the from the replica. Uh, so they also have some raft optimizations specifically uh, to them. For example, for the view change, they uh, used or implemented the raft joint consensus which they state it isn't much harder to implement than the default one by one view change from the original paper. And that allows them to efficiently uh, rebalance data buckets. Uh, yeah, not, 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 not violating the availability guarantees for them. They also optimize the raft heartbeat, heartbeats overhead by coalescing heartbeats to the RPC calls and pausing idle groups. All that provides them the ability to do automatic and manual uh, policy for the data placement. And with that, they can flexibly place data in, in the different all domains to isolate failures and provide the operators with the flexible policies of pinning different replicas in different um, regions, which is, I would say, fairly great. I, I never see such a functionality anywhere else. For example, they can write a policy which pins the data depending on its value. So, for example, they can pin the data for the European users in the Europe only, which is pretty much interesting nowadays because the law regulation requires that. So the next layer is the data distribution, which is, exists on top of this uh, replication thing. It provides monolithic or logical key space, and those buckets are called ranges, and the cockroach operate Operates data ranges, and thus those ranges partition data into chunks of 64 megs, and those chunks they are uh, grow and then shrinks, and those in that sense they are bal bal balanced, or yeah, they are balanced mm, based on heuristics, hotspots in CPU imbalance. They also support online schema changed with ideas derived from the F1 system from Google. And the basic, the, the idea is that they decompose the schema change into small atomic incremental changes and they sub maintain the invariant that there are, exists at most two changes in the system, two, two states in the system at the same time. And that works great. So next, on top of the, our monolithic key space, we can build a transaction layer and that's actually what the cockroach does on layer four. The transactions in cockroach are using MVCC and they are using points in time to do its reads and writes. Cockroach provides serializable isolation without snapshot isolation and they discuss why they removed the support for the snapshot isolation in the conclusion of the work. They are almost strong one SR consistency model, but not, yeah, but not, yes, but not. So the cockroach concurrency control is, is mostly optimistic. And by that, that means that they compare events ordering. Event, yeah, they, they, they define the events ordering based on the timestamps. So they compare timestamps of events to, to define the ordering. And for that, they need clocks. But globally, we can't have globally synchronized clocks, but we can have globally partially synchronized clocks with uncertain intervals. And they, that's ex exactly the thing that I, they are doing. Mm. 
specifically CockroachDB in, you, you, uh, uses the hybrid logical clocks with the which is the combination of the timestamp and Lamport's logical clocks. They are synchronized with the software NTP servers and, and certain intervals are configured manually and they are providing the ordering causality and strict monotonicity. They also imply some mechanics to track the clock skew to, to, to ensure that the serviceability and reusability are not violated. So the clocks in the cockroach provides a single key linearizability and a transaction operation ordering for the serviceability and also they support some invariants such as, for example, the leader releases to join this. With a linear ability, it's pretty much simple. You just need to read to serve the latest write, which you can observe at the point you're reading. And if, you, if for example, the write that you are observing the latest falls into your uncertain interval, you can just wait a bit until this uncertain interval will be resolved so the, the read will be explicitly ensure that the write happened exactly before this read and then it, it can serve the read and it, they call it uncertainty restart and it, the idea is that they shift the transaction commit time forward if this if they meet this uncertainty keeping at the same time maximum offset intact yeah mechanics of the clock skew basically they they preserve this realizability but with a linear ability they had to track divergence of the time and kill the nodes that, uh, that diverge too much because of the uh, because of this uh, linear thesis optimization so now let's take a look at how the transactional execution works um, basically, as everywhere else, this is the thing that is very similar to the two-phase commit, but in, in their case, they are optimized it to be a parallel commit. And the parallel commit uh, consists of two parts, basically the pipelining of the operations and the parallel commit itself. So let's take a look how it looks like. First of all, the user selects a closest gate a node for to be to, to to be a gateway for the transactional processing, and this node called gateway, which will be a transactional coordinator, the user feeds transaction coordinator with the transactional statements that are a skill must. Uh, Ex expressions that are then translated into the key value operations that are then uh, communicated by the coordinator with the leader leases of the corresponding groups to be replicated and evaluated. So the right pipelining is the thing that those operations, if they are independent, they can be replicated and evaluated in parallel. The pipelining itself works um, in a way that when a user sends a, an instruction, it translates into a key value operation on the coordinator and co coordinator tracks operation dependencies and flight transactions and also maintains the transaction commit time. It sends the operation to the leaseholder of the group and leaseholder checks it it can that, that the, everything is fine and the operation may be processed. It uses latches to ensure mutual exclusion for for the for the for this operation and also with other transactions, and also that all the dependencies have been replicated already. And that's an important point, meaning that if all operations are independent, then then they all will be processing parallel so 
then the leaseholder starts asynchronously replication and evaluation of the comment on the on the node and response to the coordinator that is processed and then when the replication and commit to the raft lock finished it asynchronously replies to the coordinator with a message that it's the operation is finished and in that way all the operations can be processed in parallel saving a lot of round trips and then goes the next stage which is the parallel commit and the parallel commit basically does the same thing uh, it's synchronously replicates the transactional staging record in parallel with the operations when the coordinator receives the commit statement from the user it also it it evaluates in dependencies as all the keys the transactions has been touched and then it sends it to the leaseholder which ensures that all of its dependencies were replicated already then it processes it and return to the coordinator and then at the coordinator it served at this point it serves as a synchronization barrier which when the commit was returned from the leaseholder it means that all of its dependencies all the operations of the transaction was replicated and then only thing the coordinator needs the, the notion of the uh, replication of the transaction staging record which to this point was also must be uh, replicated and then if everything is replicated at this point he can just answer to the user that the transaction has been committed and asynchronously send a commit statement to the leaseholder to mark the transactional staging record committed and in that sense the transaction may, may be for example committed in one round trip considering that the, usually the commit itself is a, uh, uh, the commit itself and the read or write operation are usually joined together mm, on that level so uh, Denis Rostov also write, write the wrote a parallel commit evaluation uh, tests at, on his github he compared the parallel commit to the to phase commit and you here you can see some results and there are a source code in the c sharp if you're interested so the transactional staging record exists in some in, in, in four different statuses and the reader when it reads the rows he can meet the right intent and the right intent is a mark of the row meaning that there was a right uh, to this row by some transaction and those right intent they serve as the right indirection to the transactional staging record so the reader can follow the right intent in direction to the transactional staging record and based on the status of this record make a decision about his behavior for example he can wait or he can try to abort the transaction or he can if he finds out for example that the transaction is committed he can uh, read the right intent value so this is how the conditional transaction record rights switching works atomically for all the readers in the system so finally we have reached the point of the concurrency control implementation and the concurrency control mostly in my opinion is optimistic and by that i mean that it mostly does the validation points almost in the style of the classical optimistic protocol and for yeah so the reads are purely optimistic all everything else is based on timestamp order verification 
And overall, the algorithm maintains the right order of the conflicting operations such that when we shift the commit timestamps, we do not violate this reliability guarantee. And it's forward observing concurrency control style in the sense that it, 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 it will validates the transaction against the concurrently running transactions. And it backwards or, orient style in a sense how it doesn't allow spawning incoming WR edges. So it's basically mostly the optimistic style concurrency control, which does, which can do the validation of the transaction many times during the progressive progression of the transaction. It, it's also stated that it's somewhat pessimistic and it's pessimistic in the sense that as soon as the, those validation points evaluate that the serviceability guarantee is violated, the transaction is aborted. So it's aborted as soon as the algorithm finds out that the transaction violates the serviceability guarantee. Uh, in the rest, it allows only reading committed items. All transactions are points in time. And the it, cockroach de uh, detects deadlocks and aborts transactions. So for the right reads conflicts, it's pretty much simple. When the reader meets a write, depending on its timestamp, it will either wait for it to be committed if the write has a lower timestamp than the read itself. This is the case on top. And the case on the bottom, if the write has higher timestamp than the read itself, it will just ignore it, which makes sense because uh, at the point in time when we are reading the write doesn't exist, right? So the most interesting part is read-write conflicts. It's a situation when the write writer observes a read by a committed transaction and the only thing it can do in that uh, case is to advance the commit time of the transaction to ensure that the direction of the conflict is as on this diagram. And on the bottom there is an example of how it pre prevents the uh, serialization violation and we, if you want we can talk about it uh, a bit later after, after I finish the presentation. So with the right to write conflicts, it basically does the same. It, I, if the timestamp of the observed write is smaller than the write we are currently doing, it just waits until it will be committed. If it meets the write that has the higher timestamp, it just advances its own timestamp forward to have the proper direction of the conflict edge. And this advancing of the timestamp is the main magic of this algorithm. It's called read refresh. And basically what it is doing is ensuring that the read set of this transaction that we are advancing timestamp of was not affected by anything in the window of the shift which is very similar to what Postgres is doing in their SSI algorithm. But basically what they are ensuring is that the ship doesn't spawn incoming WR edges, which is very similar to what BOCC does. So then we are moving to the SQ layer, which is built on top of the transaction layer. Uh, Cockroach is Postgres SQL wire compatible and its query optimizer based on the cascade style. Cascade style is, is the transformation rules which have the form of the match and transform. They usually uh, consist of two classes, the exploration and normalization. The exploration allows the planner to compare different graphs of different plants and compare costs of them. 
they, they use optcam DSL to define the rules, which then get comp uh, compiled to the Go language. And though they also have rules that are distribution aware, data distribution aware, which uh, participate then in the cost model. Then the query execution stage, they translate this graph, this logical execution plan to the physical execution plan with a special step, which is called a physical transformation. Uh, basically with the replay by the by the means of replacing the scans by the table reader scans as depicted on this graph and then based on heuristics they can decide whether there is sense to execute the trans, trans, uh, sql statement on the gateway itself or uh, to push down the operators down to the where the data resides and at currently they support the push down on the, for the read only operations but actually the push down is a very interesting thing what is also interesting is that they support uh, both row layout and column layout uh, execution engines for the data and they can transform the data from the row layout format to the column oriented format for the vectorized execution in real time in memory and they still have big uh, performance win with that that's impressive then the evaluation they did the evaluation with a sysbench ltp benchmark and it showed that it's uh, cockroach scale, scales horizontally and linearly with the growth of the cluster size then they also showed and evaluated the cross node coordination overhead with the TPCC benchmark. And they also showed that it scales linearly. They also compared themselves to the Amazon Aurora and showed that they are uh, much more efficient. And they also showed that they actually provide multi-region availability. And the lessons learned. The lessons learned are that the raft is good and there are a lot of possible optimizations to the raft and they did this re reduced uh, raft chatter and they uh, you implement joint consensus and they say that everyone must use joint consensus it's, it's, it's not much harder to implement the default algorithm and also you can take a look at what PIMCAP uses in their database with their Raft, they implemented the parallel raft paper ideas. Um, then they describe why they removed the snapshot isolation by telling that specifically implementing a snapshot isolation based on their optimistic and consequential algorithm would require a mutual exclusion of everything that doesn't make sense. Then the Postgres compatibility drivers is the problem and they are thinking of making their own drivers. The version upgrades is the hard thing. So they moved from the operation-based replication to the side, to, sorry, to the effects-based replication, effects of those comments in the raft. And the follow the workload dynamically solar rebalance um, which is a nice idea, but it's hard to implement. It's either too aggressive or too slow, so they give up with, uh, in favor of consistency and the predictability. And uh, what they're gonna work on is the pessimistic gridlock support, better data placement, new storage, with, which, which is Pebble that I talked about in the beginning, and more geared very query optimizations and operational automation. And the conclusion is that CDB is the code database. That's it.